Hey everybody, it's Chad for Today we have a review of the iPhone 4S, albeit a very delayed review, a review nonetheless, and we'll be doing not a super massive in-depth review because really the iPhone 4S is an iPhone 4 with some upgrades and tweakifications. So let's get right into it after the break. So I'm back with the iPhone 4S, or am I? Is this the iPhone 4S? Is this the iPhone 4S? What's what? There's no way to know. Actually, there is. <coughs> Um, the iPhone 4S does look very similar to the iPhone 4, but there's a very distinct way to know. Uh, iPhone 4, iPhone 4S, iPhone 4, iPhone 4S. So don't let anybody try to tell you they've got an iPhone 4S if they don't. Just look at the top and tell them who's boss. So I just thought I'd show you guys an iPhone 4 in comparison. It's pretty similar. Anyway, let's get into this review. So the iPhone 4S is a very, very similar device. If you've had an iPhone 4, <coughs> for a matter of like a year or even a more now, or even more now, there is no reason you should get an iPhone 4S. Unless you really, really love Siri. That is the only reason. But we'll be way more into that later. Let's start off by taking a quick look around the device. On the front, you've got the home button, 3.5 inch retina display, 960, 640, super high pixel resolution, 326 pixels per inch. And if we look, we can focus. You can see how sharp the display really is, really, really sharp. It's still a blow away screen even more than a year later, probably one of the best screens on the market. So still an incredibly high and lovely screen. It's a bit small, but well, it's really small actually in comparison to most Android devices now, but still of incredible quality. If you look at the top, we can see the front facing camera, earpiece. This side of the device, we can see the ringer switch, which is a feature I still wish on Android devices. I, I miss on Android devices. Volume up down, buttons are very tactile. On the bottom, 30 pin connector, which is right there. We've got the microphone and the speaker. Speaker sounds pretty good, microphone pretty good too. On that side, micro SIM card, clock, bleh, micro SIM card slot on the top. We have another microphone, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the power button, very tactile. On the back, still that glass back that is very prone to breaking. I've never broken one myself, but I know lots of people that have. Um, there's the camera, 8 megapixel now. I'll be jumping into that more later. If you click on your screen right now, you'll be able to check out my HD video test. So that's the camera and everything. Just a quick look around the device. The device is still just as solid as the iPhone 4 was. It feels incredible in the hand. It feels really solid. Nothing is going to budge here. This thing is just a piece of solid, solid engineering. So absolutely great hardware, still a great screen. It's just really, really good hardware. So you're really not taking any sacrifices with the hardware. In terms of the software, you have um, iOS 5 on here with your notifications and the new widgets. So very good from that perspective iOS 5 in general is basically iOS 4 with better notifications and a couple other tweaks here and there. Um, Apple's OS is getting quite boring and quite stagnant for me and I'm really appreciating the Android experiences I'm having now and I'm really hyped to get a Galaxy Nexus and see what the Android 4.0 is like. Overall though, if you still love the apps on iOS, which are the best by far, if somebody tries to tell me Android has a good app selection in comparison to Apple, that's just ridiculous. Like, apps like Tweetbot, they're just so well designed for usage. They're so good. You can use things like, there's just so, like, the quality of the apps is so much higher on iOS in comparison to Android. Everything about them is just well done. Now, there's obviously bad apps, but there's just so many good ones. And there's just no, no way to compare the good apps that are, you can find on the iPhone to the bad apps on Android. Now, there are good apps on Android too, but just so many good apps on the iPhone. If you are an app person and you play lots of games, you still just straight up have to go with an iPhone. The apps are way better. The games are way better. There's way better selection, way higher quality. And it's still the best experience for you to just go with an iPhone. So, we'll just pull up the web here. <clears throat> Obviously, most people know how an iPhone 4 works. The iPhone 4S is faster. How much faster, that's debatable, but it definitely is a much faster experience. I have compared them side by side in the past, and it is a nice experience. 
to use. You can see swiping through. We'll go to the New York Times. So I'm not going to say a lot more. Most people have used an iPhone 4. This really is an iPhone 4 with a better camera, Siri, and the faster processing. Um, I will do a quick demo of Siri here, and then you can also <coughs> check out my Siri video by clicking on the annotation at the top of your screen. Very, very smooth. It's just, it's just an iPhone, right? But very smooth. Nothing really blow away. But we will do a Siri test. Siri, set my alarm for tomorrow morning. So I just turned that one on. Um, Siri, remind me to upload this video at 8.30 Saturday AM. See, it didn't really work that well there, but let's try it again. Siri, remind me to upload this video in two hours. Here's your reminder for today at 4.30 PM. So, shall it, I create it? It didn't remind me in two hours. It reminded me now. It also didn't get the name right. We can talk. Siri's a cool feature and something that's really fun to play around with at first, but it wears off very, very fast. Check out my full video on Siri if you want to see how it really works. It's very fun to use. It's very good if you're walking, biking on a roll. You don't want to take your phone out all the time. It is accurate if it's quiet, not as accurate if it's loud. Cool feature. Not something that you're going to buy a phone over, though. Like, if, if, if it was plugged into the API app ecosystem so all the apps could take advantage, you could say, tweet this, take a picture and do that. You know, check this. If it was plugged into the ecosystem of the App Store, then I'd say it may be a thing to buy your phone over. But really, to buy an iPhone 4S over, but really, all you're getting is this stuff. So, not a big thing. Click right here or up here to check out my videos and to see more stuff about Siri. Now, let's give you the verdict on the iPhone 4S. So, the iPhone 4S is an iPhone 4 with a really, really good camera and video capture, Siri, which is, do you really want to buy a phone over that, and faster processing. It's more, it's faster. Now, if these things are not immediately attractive to you, there is no reason you should be buying this device right now. You should either keep your iPhone 4 and, you know, just keep your iPhone 4 for now, which is by all means a very, you know, it's still a great phone, and wait for the iPhone 5, or you should be buying an Android device. Uh, there's no reason to upgrade it from an iPhone 4. If you want to hop onto the iPhone bandwagon right now because of the apps, then that's always the thing that you can say, yes, I really want to get those apps. There's just no reason to upgrade from an iPhone 4. There are reasons to go to the iPhone 4S right now, but in my opinion, it's just not the time. Apple doesn't have the best device right now. The best devices are Android devices right now. So that's been my review of the iPhone 4S. It's still a great phone. It's still, you know, like an 8.5, whatever you want to say about it. It's a good phone. Not a big upgrade, still a good phone. I'd go stick with an Android device or wait for the iPhone 5. That's from an Apple lover. Adios, amigos. Can't protect Tania. Reviewing the iPhone 4S.